So we're gonna continue with uh, the Flanders. Today we're gonna take a few of the, we're gonna try and take some of the front end off and uh, strip that piece off so we don't have that in our way. And then we're gonna uh, continue with this backbone here. We're, let's see here, there. We gotta get this straighter, we gotta get this mount on the bottom here. We gotta get it closer to well, this angle's got to actually tilt so we can get this nice and flat. So then we can start getting some um, measurements so we can start repairing the frame. Stay tuned. At this point, there's lots of heating and adding some penetrating fluid to all the all the joints all the bolts all the nuts and just trying to get everything to loosen up i mean this stuff hasn't been apart in over 100 years and surprisingly it's actually they're coming out pretty pretty decent haven't broken any bolts which is uh quite the accomplishment the one part of the bike that doesn't have any damage to it is the forks so i'm really careful to do this uh slow and make sure I don't do any more damage that has already occurred um, when the bike got driven over by a tractor, you know, 40, 50 years ago. Struggling a lot here on getting some of the uh, castle nuts taken off because there's a cotter pin that goes through the bolts and, you know, these cotter pins don't want to move, they don't want to come out and uh, they're breaking off. So there was quite a bit of uh, playing around trying to get those all out and uh, finally succeeded. So just continuously heating and cooling, adding some penetrating fluid, tapping it with a hammer just to kind of break, break it loose from some of the rust. There's a center point on that front fork leg that it's just two kind of studs that come out and um it's a um, not there's no bush or anything but it's a pivot point and um the arm that goes to the back leg was really seized on there pretty good um, i was able to get the top and bottom bolt off and you know lots of lots of working it back and forth just trying to break it loose but the center was was really tough it didn't want to come loose um I, i'm here i'm uh, just punching through the uh the bolts trying to get them back and forth so again always back and forth you know side to side and just you know trying to loosen it up you can just see i'm just going back and forth back and forth and you know you just gotta play with it and it slowly will come out Considering that this bike has been outside at least since 1955 and on the ground for probably 40 years, it's really surprising that any of these bolts actually just don't snap off. They actually are coming out and, and I should be able to salvage some of them or at least use them as templates to bring, make new ones. So after lots of heating and... Uh... Working on these three points, they're all really pretty rusted. We got all everything pretty much loosened. So um, we're just gonna knock all this stuff out. So again, took all these bolts, heated them all up, got all the nuts off finally. And uh, we'll just bang these.
First time this fork has been disassembled in 110, 13 years. So we got the fork off the uh, 1910 Flanders. So we'll just go over it really quick. Here's where the rocker studs. That's where the rockers for the Springer goes. Kind of interesting, it's um, kind of ovaled and then they get stretched out here, kind of squared off. Really nice little detail. Um, everything looks pretty straight so far. The um, These pieces that join the Springer to the uh, back leg, these would have been nickel plated. You can just see some of the nickeling left. Um, this piece is cast and those studs that's not a bolt or anything that's a stud so I have to figure out you know had to figure that out when we were pulling it apart these two bolts top and bottom they connect to the back springer this was interesting finally get to see this off and I'm thinking this was some kind of dampener something you know that you would tighten to slow the um, spring rebound not 100% certain but it's I don't know what else it could be um, this was facing back towards the frame and not sure if it went around it or butted up against it it's got like a like a like a heart style bolt wing nut kind of thing and um, we'll have to get this nut off and uh, so we can, you know, take all this assembly apart and just see how it kind of shaped the springs are. These are interesting because these are like squared. These are round. It's just, uh, you know, so here's some original paint. This one would have been black. Yeah, kind of neat. So again, here's the uh, Springer fork that was on here. We took it off. And um, one of the fun things we're going to have to do is heat up this uh, top nut quite a bit because this whole top piece of the handlebars um, is held in by this one bolt. I guess it goes through the stem of the fork. This is all seized up in the moment. It can't turn it, can't move it. And uh, so this is going to be... You know, probably not a fun job trying to get it off without wrecking it. Um, and uh, once we do that, then we can, you know, look at repairing some of the handlebars, making the jig, or like making it so we can make a new one on this side. And, uh, but the rest of the fork actually looks really good. Very happy with it. Doesn't look bent or anything. So that's lucky since this you know bike was run over by a tractor this could have been easily damaged and not as easily repaired as the frame will be here's one of those parts that if you didn't have one or at least know what it looked like you know it's really tough to to get all this figured out but um that's the bonus about you know finding this chassis is is just these little things this is what is like the hard stuff to find because if this was at a swap meet anywhere in a you know in a box of parts, the chances someone actually understanding knowing what this fit on is you know you know thousand uh, ten thousand to one you know what I mean. So you can see there's one cable that comes in here at this angle, so it comes in and it goes at at this angle. So that was probably for the the throttle, and then this one goes down. And this would have been for timing of some sort, um, you know, to advance it, I guess. I'm not really 100% certain yet, but that's how most of the other motor motorcycles are. So, yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's held on by a clamp here. And uh, we're going to heat this all up, get all these, you know, save all these bolts and get that off. And then uh, we'll continue working on getting that, uh, those the top handlebar, handlebar clamp and the uh, fork off. 
One step closer. Little heat comes off pretty good now. This is all still pretty hot. I really don't want to touch it with my hand, so we'll let it cool off. We got the two cables off. Now we'll have to get the, we'll have to get this. Uh, clamp that goes around here which is probably seized up pretty good in here so I want some penetrating fluid and see what happens but uh, another piece coming off one of the other things I did this week was I uh, took this broken piece that I had found in the farmyard and just welded it back in place you know pretty crude really but whatever um, and then what I'll do is I'll once I, once I get this back uh, tube straight and where I want it, pull the motor out and I'll bring this into the shop, straighten this out and then just, just weld it back together just so it's, it's together and just for measurement's sake. And then we can start figuring out the alignment on the back, how much width we need. And, um, you know, it's all critical because it all ties together in, in a triangular here. So... When you pull back, pull this back, this could be, you know, moving this way and it allows more room. Like you have to, everything's tied together. So you pull it here, you push there, and it affects the rest of the geometry of the frame, if that makes any sense. So I set up the, I set up a bunch of chains, just chains to hold this all down, pull the motor out. Again, we got to take this tube here and pull it back so what i did is i chained it from here to the table to there and on the top here i went around this came back over here around here and cinched it up tighten it all up and then i hooked up to another part of the table porter power a pull type wrap the chain around it and we'll see what happens again this is just so we can get the motor in position so we can figure out um the tubing that we're going to replace so now this is it's all going to get replaced so we're going to pump it up here hope the chain doesn't um hope the chain doesn't slide but okay so if you if you're watching it close It seems to be working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is watch the watch the spring back. You see how much that sprung back? Okay, so now I'm gonna put it right in the bad spot here. And um, if you look at the tube, it's still curved here. But again, we just won't pull this straight.
Okay, let's bring back. Like this is, you can see it's pretty crude how I've got it all hooked up, but again, it's just to pull it so we can actually just get some measurements. So at this point, we just want this to come up. We want it to be square with this. We want this to be a 90. Let's see if this, if I can get any reading off this. No, from that, I'm way off. All right. So after looking at it back and forth a few more times, I think I'm gonna just pull it a bit more. Again, I got no measurements. I'm just trying to figure, the, figure this out as I'm going. I, I really did assume that this is a 90 here. Um, it could not, it might not be, but um, when I run a square square edge to this point, it's still farther off. So if I can pull this back, tilt this up a bit, maybe that'll help. So let's just give it a bit more. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is, I don't like how the top tube is more straighter than I, than it needs to be in my opinion. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this chain back off. I'm gonna take the motor and I'm gonna put it back in and see if that fits any better and if it, does, if it isn't, then where else do I have to push? I feel I, I might have to push from this point up to here and bring this back. But uh, I'll know more when I get the motor back in. So we got the motor back in. And it's pretty flat. And... bolts are going right in so I think I've got what I wanted I got the ability to take some measurements now because this is going in by hand all the way down to the case so that's a good thing now there's also space here on the front frame between the engine plates so the the, um, where the engine plates go onto the case, it's tight. But onto the frame, as you can see, there's a gap here, gap here, and a gap here. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to be equal, if it's offset. Why would you offset it? I don't know. I just, I'm assuming that it's squared, that it's going to be square, like it's going to be equal distance on both sides. So, again, the bolts are in. They're going in nice and easy. So that means it's not, you know, that's all the way down. Um, so that means it's not, you know, pinching on the case. And there with, with a couple of these. Uh, I can now take some measurements. Now the frame is, is all tweaked. It's you know, it's ugly right now. This is, if you look on the back, the plane of the top tube is right off. But you can see the, this is all ripped. It's all messed up there. It's ripped over there. Yeah, uh, not really sure. Well, I might try and push it. I just don't like doing that with 
the motor in the frame. So I'm trying to decide what to do. Do I just uh, leave it for right now, take my measurements, or do I make a, you know, in, in place of the motor, do I make a mount that goes, that ties in the front, ties the back, and then I can twist it over. But is it going to help me with my measurements or not? I, you know, I don't know. I got to think about this. So I think uh, I'll leave that at that for tonight. But, um, you know, I think if you look at the frame tube, the backbone, it's a lot better, straighter. So, yeah, it's a step. So standing here again, I look at my my tank. That top tube is really not the angle it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this, and then it kind of drops. So I got to, I think at this point, just I keep going over it in my head trying to figure out what's the next step. I really think I need to just, create this tube if I create that tube then I got something solid to work from because right now I'm you know I'm having a tough time here trying to get everything sorted a friend of mine gave me some measurements and he gave me an angle here and an angle here so at the same time as I'm doing this I might get this tube um made and then decide what's next a friend of mine was over um guy with a ton of experience and uh talked about it and one of the things he mentioned was instead of trying to take these off and re-sweat it maybe chop it here and then uh sleeve it plug weld it and then put the tube up to it so i'm still on the fence about that that would work easy here that would work easy here. Uh, not too bad there. Not good there. And easy here and here. You know. So I don't know. I just. I'm just debating. Debating what that's going to be like. Um, yeah. I mean from the. Again. From the pictures. It looks like it's a straight line. But. You know, it could be a couple degrees off. And, uh, you know, I'll do my best. Whatever. You know, I'm not professional. I'm just some guy wanting to ride a 110-year-old bike that he found in a farmyard. Uh, they got run over by a tractor. Stay tuned. Hey, if you like it, you know, if, if you like what we're doing, you know, um, Comment. If you don't like what we're doing, don't comment. And uh, hope you enjoy this series. I mean, I'm taking you, taking you with us on this journey of trying to bring this 110-year-old motorcycle back from the dead. You know, back from a carcass. And um, I'm not professional again. You know, we're just going to see what we can do. And um, I hope you enjoy the journey. Thanks.